Uranium is one of the heaviest naturally occurring elements, with hydrogen being the lightest, on a scale arranged according to the increasing mass of its nuclei. Uranium has a density of 18.7 times that of water. Why it's the most dangerous metal on Earth? What are some of its positive and negative sides? How rare is it? You're watching Top 10 World, and if you want to know all of this about the world's heaviest metal, then stay tuned till the end of the video, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. What really is uranium, and how dangerous is it? Uranium is a naturally occurring radioactive element that's found in abundance throughout the Earth's crust, but is concentrated in certain hard rock formations. Over billions of years, uranium atoms slowly disintegrate, yielding a variety of radioactive byproducts, including thorium-230, radium-226, radon-222, and the dreaded radon daughters, such as lead-210 and polonium-210. Despite the fact that Canada is the world's greatest producer and exporter of uranium, the vast majority of Canadians are completely uninformed of their involvement with this deadliest of metals. Nuclear weapons and nuclear reactors are the only two commercially important uses for uranium. As a result, the uranium industry's final output are bombs and radioactive waste. Uranium is classified as a harmful metal for this reason alone. The fatal nature of uranium, on the other hand, was demonstrated long before the first atomic bombs or nuclear reactors were developed. The cancerous metal. Apart from being a nuclear weapon, why is it so dangerous? Underground miners in Schneeberg, Germany were documented to have an extremely high prevalence of deadly lung illness as early as 1546, and for centuries later. In 1879, it was discovered that roughly half of these miners died of lung cancer, both clinically and physically. Lung cancer was substantially more common in this group than the general population. The same bleak number of 50% lung cancer mortality was later discovered among miners in Jokomstal, Czechoslovakia. The uranium content of the ore in question was exceptionally high. Similar increases in lung cancer incidents have been observed among Swedish iron, lead, and zinc miners, Newfoundland force bar miners, and especially uranium miners around the world. Even before the onset of World War II, scientific publications published in the 1930s clearly stated that airborne radioactivity in mines was most likely the cause of lung cancer. Radon gas and its solid byproducts known as radon daughters are the main culprits. As the miners dig for uranium-bearing ore, enormous amounts of radioactive radon gas are released into the mine atmosphere. Because radon has a short half-life, 3.8 days, the air in the mine quickly becomes significantly contaminated with radon daughters. These tiny poisonous particles cling to microscopic dust particles and are sucked into the miner's lungs, where they lodge and provide a huge dosage of alpha radiation to the sensitive lung tissue. As a result, there's an unusually high incidence of lung cancer, pulmonary fibrosis, and other lung disorders, all of which take decades to appear. Well, everything comes with positive and negative sides. So does this dangerous metal. Uranium is mined and used in a variety of non-military and non-energy businesses. Uranium-derived radioisotopes are employed in a variety of medicinal applications, from cancer treatment to sterilizing medical equipment. Radioisotopes are utilized in industrial materials and commercial items such as smoke detectors to measure, test, and analyze them. They're also used to keep harvested produce fresh and safeguard delicate crops during shipment. Depending on which estimate you trust, the world's freely accessible oil supply will be depleted in 75 to 125 years. It's estimated that the supply of economically viable coal will be depleted in around 150 years. However, according to an article published in the American Journal of Physics, there's enough uranium in all of the world's oceans and the Earth's crust under the oceans to last 5 billion years if current uranium mining rates are maintained. But wait, while this metal might have a lot of uses, it still is the most dangerous metal on Earth. And here are some major cons of using this metal. The Ontario government's mortality estimates were used in testimony before the Elliott Lake Environmental Assessment Board in 1978 to illustrate that even acceptable levels of radon contamination in residences would result in an extra 17 lung cancer deaths per thousand people chronically exposed to such levels. In other words, instead of 54 lung cancers per thousand, 71 should be expected, representing a 31% increase. The board suggested that the radon limit for dwellings be reconsidered in light of this finding. However, no such re-evaluation has taken place. 
because phosphate ores are high in uranium, phosphate fertilizers also emit radon gas. When tobacco crops are too fertilized, radon gas builds up beneath the thick canopy of leaves and tiny dust particles loaded with radon daughters cling to the sticky, resinous hairs on the underside of each leaf. When tobacco is harvested, it includes high levels of radioactive lead-210 and polonium-210. With every inhalation, cigarette smokers breathe these radon daughters into their lungs. Each uranium mine, in addition to killing uranium miners and those living in contaminated homes, acts as a slow bomb, spreading deadly radioactive poisons across vast areas of the Earth, much like the Chernobyl disaster did, and much like atmospheric nuclear weapons tests have done, but at a much slower rate. With a light breeze, radon gas may travel thousands of kilometers in just a few days. Because it's much heavier than air, it deposits its daughters, solid radioactive fallout, on the flora, soil, and water below. The ensuing radioactive materials penetrate the food chain, eventually ending up in fruits and berries, the meat of fish and animals, and finally, human bodies. Market Value of Uranium The price of uranium on the market is controlled by supply and demand, as well as political motives, just like any other commodity. Because of the advent of cheaper and more available energy such as natural gas, they can cause uranium prices to rise or drive prices to fall. Following the Fukushima disaster, the WNA 2011 market report forecasts a 48% rise in uranium demand from 2013 to 2023. Furthermore, more effective nuclear reactors such as fast reactor technology have the potential to prolong those supplies by over 2,000 years. Uranium, on the other hand, is not traded on the London or New York stock exchanges. Instead, it's bartered between buyers and sellers through contracts. These uranium contracts can be priced using a single fixed price or a primary base price, such as the current uranium spot price. At the time of purchase, a spot market contract is usually priced on or near the reported spot market price. Uranium has left a very catastrophic legacy all for the sake of creating more bombs and nuclear reactors, dead miners and smokers, massive lakes of tailings leaking radioactive poisons into the biosphere, radon daughters collecting in houses and the food chain, iodine-131, strontium-90, cesium-137, and the other radioactive fission products released into the atmosphere from Chernobyl are all shattered fragments of uranium atoms left behind from the fission process. Even the exceptional toxicity of plutonium can be traced to uranium because plutonium is made by transmuting uranium through neutron absorption. What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comment box below. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos.